Hey there, and welcome to the Watch Quan YouTube channel. And today we're going to be discussing exactly what you should do if you want to buy the right watch at the right time and, of course, at the best possible price. Let's get into it. So, when you're looking to buy a watch, the first thing you should recognize, unless you are a multimillionaire, is that you are buying an asset. Hands down, no matter what anybody tells you, if you're spending five plus thousand dollars on watches, which is the watches we care about on this channel, top watches in the world, if you're spending five thousand dollars or more on any asset, but a watch in particular, which is an asset that doesn't have a huge liability, a huge cost to it, and doesn't draw down necessarily, like necessarily, whereas cars, as soon as you drive it off the lot, they do draw down, are a lot like cars houses. If you're going to spend $30,000 on a watch or $50,000 on a watch, why should you not do a little bit of studying to make sure that not only is it a watch you like, but that it is a watch that works for your budget and a watch that hopefully you'll be able to maybe wear, get a couple miles on it and trade it in and not, not lose the scent. It's so, it's so much more possible than most collectors think than uh, to, to buy a watch for say $30,000 and then trade that watch in in a couple of years for 32, 33, 35, maybe it keeps up with inflation, trade it in for 35, and then you get another watch at the exact same, uh, at, at the exact same value. So you're, you're keeping up with this value of watches and you're not losing 10, 20, 30% every time you want to trade a watch. Or if you're a trader and you're a flipper, well, that's your whole game. Everything you do is about how well you're buying watches. So that's what we're here for. And today we're going to discuss how you can, without any services whatsoever, do this on your own. If you're buying a house or you're buying a watch, you need to use a broker, right? You need to hire somebody to, and pay them to help you buy the right house for you or help you buy the car that's best for you. And you always care about that, right? You always say, hey, I want to spend $25,000 on this car. I want to make sure I'm getting the one I like and the one that's perfect for me because I don't know everything about every one of these cars on the lot. You do, Mr. Broker, Mr. Dealer. So please help me out. And they do, of course, they're happy to because they make a commission. I'm not going to do that. Most people aren't going to do that. If you go to the watchbox.com, you can just put a $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 asset in a cart and book out of there with a credit card. I mean, I'm not saying that that's crazy because people do it every day. I've done it before. But at the end of the day, really, you should do a little bit more due diligence than just buying something because you think it looks great. Maybe there's other assets out there that are similar, even almost exactly the same, that might be better according to the market as it is. Let's talk about how to figure out if that's the case. All right. Now, I'm at eBay right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can do this with two watches. One, which is, in my opinion, not the best watch to buy today at the price that it's at. And two would be another watch that is very similar, looks similar, but is in my opinion, much better to buy. And we'll talk about that right away. All right. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to be going over the Royal Oak 15500 steel. Now, this is watch is a huge outperformer. In fact, this watch has performed so well that back in 2021 and 2022, it was trading between 70 and $90,000. This is a stainless steel watch. Okay. A wonderful watch. Nonetheless, stainless steel. Okay, you can see if you go to eBay and just look it up, 15500ST. If you're looking to spend, let's say, $50,000 today on a beautiful Gerald Genta octagonal um, watch with a beautiful bracelet, for example, you will be able to find one in steel at around 50 on eBay. Now, what if you want the blue dial? If you want the blue dial, you can scroll and find them for, well, they're actually pretty high, 64000 Now, I know for a fact you can get them a little lower than that, but what's really important here is that, right? Let's look here. On the left side, we're going to find what we want to find. First of all, we always want to check off authenticity guarantee. If it's not authenticity guaranteed, you don't even want to see it. Filter this out. Look how many of these, these results just went away because of that. Second, you want to say dial color blue. That's what we're looking for right now. So there's six of them on the market right now. Okay, that's quite a bit. And that's a number now that you want to keep in mind. There's six of them on the market. Okay. Now with that, now that you've done that, you go ahead, you don't even have to scroll or do anything else. Six of them on the market, maybe five, because this one appears to be a silver. I'm not sure why that's here. Okay, so five on the market. They're trading between 58,000 and 73,000. There's probably some specs and things like that, that you want to work with. Now, the next thing you're going to do, now that you have this five, you know, there's five trading, go to the sold items, and find out 
in the last 30 days, how many of these have sold? None. None. Now, of course, there are other markets, there are other places where wa these watches could have sold. But if you focus on more than one place at a time, you're going to make things very complicated for yourself very quickly. So let's just focus on eBay just to get a good grasp of how what I call liquid this watch is. This is not everything that goes into liquidity, but this is partially, at least partially, this is the, the demand dynamic on eBay will help you understand if this is a great watch to be buying today. I know for a fact that right now, this watch has five on supply and zero on demand in the last 30 days. Now that is already in and of itself something that is a kind of a red flag for me. If I'm going to the car dealership, I see I want to buy a $50,000 unit, like a huge, beautiful SUV, $50,000. Am I going to want to get the one that hasn't sold one unit in the last 30 days at that place? Or am I going to want to maybe look around and see if there's one like it? Because I like the watch. I like the, I like the unit. Maybe somebody can help me out and show me around. Okay, let's do that then, right? So let's um, uncheck this. We'll keep authenticity guarantee on. And we'll look up Audemars Piguet. Um, oil. Oh, and then what if we were to look, to look for a similar watch like this one? 26470, right? Okay. Now there is there is a royal this is an all this is an offshore, don't get me wrong. But if we look this one up, okay, here is an example of a watch that's trading almost exactly the same price, right? We're looking at a $78,000 watch here. We are looking at another 92,000. Okay, so this is a bit more. You can get it on the strap for less than that watch we were talking about. Another one here, okay? This is a brick, right? So a brick is a 42 millimeter watch. It looks different, right? This is not a blue dial. This is a chronograph. It's a, it's a rhodium dial. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. Now, rhodium, by the way, is the most expensive precious metal in the world. So if you can get a rhodium dial, you're getting more melt value. This watch is gorgeous, okay? So it looks to me like on the strap, you can get it between, what do we, what do we see here? Another trick, by the way, when you're on eBay, is change this to shipping lowest first. Now, normally, you don't want to do that because you'll get stuck looking at straps and things and tools and things like that. But because we have authenticity guaranteed turned on, you won't see that. Then you can, of course, filter some more. So if I know I want the band color to be gold, as in a brick, I want to see, you know, just like just like with the steel band, you want a metal band. Okay, so now we're seeing all of these um, from lowest to highest. They go from 72 and up. Okay, so let's say you have a budget. If you have a $50,000 budget, why wouldn't you aim, not, not necessarily from eBay, but why wouldn't you aim to get something closer to this? A solid gold rhodium dial, um, basically beast, solid gold beast, that is essentially the same watch. I mean, it is a 42 millimeter watch. It's, it's large. It has more complications. It's beautiful. Now, if you must have a steel blue dial watch, then you don't necessarily need to look at this watch. But I think you're starting to catch my drift. Now, let's see for a moment. 12 of these are available today. What if we go to the sold uh, to the sold bit? Okay, so we're just going to click sold now and see if have any sold over the last uh, month. Look at that. We actually saw one. And this is very interesting to me. We see one, two, two of them at least sold in the last month, right? One and two. They look like they're the same one, but they can't because they're two different prices. Okay, so one sold on March 30th, the other one sold on April 6th. So this is within the last month or so, okay? This is June 25th, so this is, you know, this is back, uh, okay, this is back in the last couple couple of months here, recently. So we see that as opposed to the watch we were just looking at, two of these have sold, and we, look at this one. In March, uh, March 30th, this sold at, at your budget. So you're going to buy a $50,000 zero-demand watch with six units or five, five to six units of supply when you could buy one with two, basically a two score, if you will, on demand and a supply of only, what was it? Nine, nine or 12, two, four, seven, 11, <laughs> sorry, eight. Okay. So if you have, um, let's go back real quick. It's important to get these numbers not exactly right necessarily. That's what watch quant my website is for. You don't need to actually calculate all of this, but we got 12, 12 here. Okay. So if you're looking at 12 units, most of them are way overpriced. So you don't have to look at all of these. 
but you see seventy-eight thousand dollars here. You see, uh, a, you saw the two of them that sold one for fifty, the other one for sixty thousand. If you see that, you're basically talking to the lot to the the dealer, and you're saying, "Hey, dealer, what else you got on this car lot here that might be in my price range that might look similar, and maybe better for me." Now, this one has a higher recent demand. We're not going to look at any other specs today because I want to make sure that we're not over covering material. But the, one of the first and most important things you need to understand about watches before you buy one is, is this liquid? And one of the major components of understanding a liquid watch, liquid means you can easily sell it. You need to trade it in. Good. You need to buy a new house. Good. So, God forbid some bad thing happened in your life. And you need to go take care of that with 70 grand or 80 grand, boom, I can sell it. The stainless steel watch we looked at, at the very beginning, not the case, right? You will not be able to sell that watch as much as you'd like. Let's check this out really quick. We're going to look at the Audemars Piguet. Now we're going to watchquant.com. You, you do not need to do that, okay? But you certainly can if you want. So we're on watchquant.com here. And um, the reason I'm here is I just want to sh kind of look at this because this is going to help you understand, first of all, what is like, it's going to help you look at the lot. If you don't currently have a lot, if you're not a watch expert and you're on eBay and you see those stainless steel watches at those prices, 60, $70,000, you're probably just going to buy it, right? If you like it, you buy it. Or you could look around the lot and look for a watch that has better demand metrics, better liquidity, and get the watch that's not only something you like, that's good for you but also the watch that's going to hold up its value and maybe even go up in value because it's got good demand. It's good liquid. So basically we can see all here, right? And if you go, if you go to watch quantum on the very first watch is going to have the highest liquidity. we we already show you the best watches off the bat. So we love to make sure that you're going to see the best watches in the world as quickly as we can. So we're just going to scroll through here. We don't have to necessarily do this. We can easily search out the watches we want to see, but I want to see, you know, all of these, out of my big gaze because I want to see, hey, from top to bottom, from most liquid to least liquid, what are we seeing here? Okay, here, right, right after the second page, we're looking at another OR. This is our Royal Oak Offshore between forty-two and fifty-six thousand. This watch is trading under, under my budget. I didn't even see this before. This is beautiful. Uh, so this one in particular it looks like it might be actually our choice because. Our budget was what, $50,000 or so, $55,000. That's what we're looking for for that other watch, maybe more for the steel watch. For another watch of a similar size, absolutely beautiful chronograph and date. I mean, this is an epic watch. It's solid gold. And we're looking at there's a whole bunch of stuff here. And we'll certainly go through it all soon enough. If we want to look at recent sales, I can click here. So by the way, you don't have to memorize all those things I just did. You could just use this, right? So it looks like there are no recent sales in this watch. If you go to search for a great deal, let's get rid of the Piguet. Okay. I think a little bit of lag here. All right. So we've gone to the pinpoint listing. We're looking for this watch online. Let's see if is there anything. Nothing, no matches. It's incredible. That's a crazy looking watch. <laughs> okay, so there's a steel version of this watch. So this is a great example. You can get an offshore 42 millimeters. Looks just like it. Uh, not just like it. Okay, it looks quite a bit like it. It's a chronograph, but a little bit more sporty. But if you're looking for a watch like this, okay, you could potentially get a similar watch in solid gold for less money. Okay. Here's another great example, 26470R. Okay. So that's an example. Let's keep looking for one moment. Okay. So I'm going to go back to our search and kind of keep looking here. I want to see if I can find a watch that is similar to what I was looking for, but might end up saving me money, right? So let's say Royal Oak and just type that in and see what we find, okay? 
So we're seeing the most liquid royal oak will be this one here. It appears to be the 2612 on a leather strap. Very dressy, but it's still a chronograph. Okay. Scroll over a bit. You can see there's a few different types. This is very dressy. Here's an absolute beast. Okay. Here's a smaller version of the one we're looking at before, blue dial. So we're looking for a, a tap dial with blue blue background or something along those lines, right? So if I go to see all, now I will just see the Royal Oaks. Okay. Very good. Now, yeah, I mean, it's hard to compare a gold. Usually you would imagine it's hard to compare a gold watch to a stainless steel watch. And yet you see that 15500 classic uh, Royal Oak trading, uh, it, I mean, trading in, in a range that's so high, it's, it's almost incredible. It's incredible. I mean, you will have um, just as good of a time with a rose gold watch as you will with a very dressy stainless steel watch, I think. But of course, that's not for me to decide. Here is a really good example. Okay, you have the 15400 IP uh, or 15403 IP. This is a $50,000 watch, a little less perhaps, seeing it at $43,000 here. Probably not super liquid. But this is a very classy looking watch. It's Royal Oak Titanium. So instead of a 15500 steel, this is a 15400 titanium. Um, now let's check this one out. You know, it's my, and this one might be worth looking at. Okay. So depending on if you're looking for steel, if you, if you do or do not want um, a, a rose gold watch, if you're absolutely looking for steel, you don't have to get that one just because you like it. Maybe you should check and see the numbers. Okay. This one has a current inventory of two units. Okay, and the average monthly sell through of uh, 0.13 units. So this is not liquid at all. Liquidity score is 0.12, pretty bad. So maybe that's not the right one. Okay, but here's the thing: if you're if you don't have this tool to help you see what are the most liquid Royal Oaks, or what what are who, which Royal Oaks should I be looking at, right? Then how are you going to do this? Now you can always open Data Paths. By the way, if you do that, you can click Go Hunting. If you click go hunting, you can look for high demand. See how it says hunt for demand here? When you turn that on, we're going to be able to actually look for watches with high demand. So we can type in the word Royal Oak here and see which are the Royal Oaks with high demand. Okay. This is looking at a high liquidity to low. And you can see there's quite a few of them with good demand. Now, or good liquidity, I should say. I want to look for a, a high liquidity, high unit count launch. And there's just not that many units of, of this particular of Royal Oaks being sold. They just are not liquid. But this one is trading at a 77 liquidity with 1.83 units. Okay, that's not so bad. Um, so this looks like it's probably my watch. This is a steel watch. It's got good liquidity, 1.83 units, which means basically two a month or selling through eBay. And you can see that it's outperforming four times price to value. It's got a great demand factor, right? You have current inventory of eight, last month sell through of two, your average monthly of 1.83. This is a big bull sign, by the way. When you see last month sell through of two units, which when the average monthly sell through is 1.83, that's when you know that this watch is actually, it's kind of, a, it's, it's, it's a good deal. Um, you know, it's only a little bit higher, but higher nonetheless, right? So it's a great demand factor, great price to value, not too high, not overpriced. Now you basically find the, find the watch, right? So you use our, our pinpoint listing, you can see if there's any up there, there should be two. Okay, actually we see eight now. It looks like that needs to be updated. Uh, that updates automatically every day or two. Um, but yeah, these are all, okay, these are not exactly what we were just looking at. But this one, these blue dials are like one third the price of the watch we saw at the very beginning. So for one third the price and a leather strap instead of, by the way, I would prefer a leather strap on this kind of watch, in my opinion, because of the, the brick look is really overbearing. That's my opinion. But anyway, you can get this for half or less. Blue dial, beautiful Royal Oak, Gerald Genta, octagonal, just beautiful watch, right? So that's my point, right? This has liquidity. This watch at 20 grand will probably stay 20 grand going forward. It's performing well. It's been performing well. It's not overpriced. Whereas if we look up, and we haven't looked at this yet, um, I wasn't sharing that. 
This is what I'm talking about here. Okay, you can get it on eBay for nineteen nine nine three or twenty four thousand, and you can always negotiate. And one of the best tools to negotiate will be using watch one if you want uh, it's up to you but um, one of the best ways you can actually learn how to do this is going up to here and setting up a trade so i'm on this i'm on this watch if you press the play button that's going to give you the optimal starting point right so optimal starting point 17.3 maybe you want to get it a little lower right if you can get it at 78 percent probability of break even that means you have very little risk so this is your optimal buy price for this watch and your target buy price will be 12,000. Of course, that might not be a realistic thing. Let's look at it. Specify watch conditions. If it's brand new, you're realistically going to be able to get it between 18 and 20,000, right? Very tight. Okay. And that's pretty much that. Now, one more thing I think is important to do here is let's go back and look at the actual watch we were, we were originally looking for. So I'm going to turn off hunting and just look at the regular collection. And I'm going to look for the 15500 ST. Now that I've seen it, okay, I have the 15500 ST regular, and then I have the ST blue dial. Let's look at the blue dial since that's what we were looking at. Okay. And here, if you scroll down, you can see that the average sell-through monthly is 38 units. And yet, and yet, there's zero units having been sold in the last month to two months. And there's a 31 unit inventory. What does that mean? That means that this liquidity score, it's down 78% in the last 30 days. It is down to 12.97. Now, what, does this mean that I wouldn't never buy this watch? No, it's a beautiful watch, nice blue dial, and it's a great watch. But at the end of the day, do you really wanna be getting caught in a liquidity trap? In other words, you buy this watch today at 50 grand, right? Because it's between 37 and 54,000. Our estimated fair market on this watch is only 42.9. Realistically, you probably shouldn't be buying it. But that's just what we, and the reason why we say that is because look at the MSRP, 26.6. That is usually the floor for, for really high, highly traded watches. This used to trade at $80,000. $80, um, that doesn't mean that $50,000 is a good deal. What it means is pay attention to the demand, pay attention to the amount of units that sold through last month. If it's zero, that's an insanely bad sign <laughs> for this watch. So you should probably look elsewhere, look around the lot and find another steel watch that has demand, that has sell through, or find a similarly similarly looking watch made of solid gold for a little bit more, maybe five or $10,000, or maybe even less, depending on which one you're getting. You could probably get the okays, the, um, the rubber versions, and pay less than $50,000 for a similar watch, just as beautiful, made of solid gold. So that's my point. The whole point of this video is, if you're gonna spend enough money that you could buy a car, do a little bit of homework, go to eBay, check out these numbers the way I showed you, use the sold items, use authenticity guarantee, uh, filter it properly, and make sure that you're buying the watch that you like and the watch that's right for you and your situation. So that way you can trade it in, liquidate it if you have to, Etc. so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it for me. You can always go to WatchQuant and for free, not even have to sign up. You can look at all these watches and we curate all these numbers for you. So you do not have to necessarily do all that homework on eBay, but if you'd like to enjoy it. And in either case, I hope that this helps somebody out there to buy the right watch at the right price and at the right time. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. And see you next time.